If you want to modify a Honda Beat, here's your options. In this video I'm going to be going through suspension, wheels, chassis mods, brakes, engine mods, engine swaps, body kits, lights, hardtops, interior mods, steering wheels, gear knobs, stereos and seats. Whew. Get ready. To kick it off I'm going to talk about suspension because that seems to be the place that most people start. Really the suspension options fall into two categories. You can go with the simple option of lowering springs of which there's a number of brands, most of them you're going to have to import from Japan, like Orosaur, which is the ones I have on my beat, Cross, Zoom, Cozy Lights, and there's a whole bunch more. If you want more control over your ride height or are planning on taking your beat to the track, well then a full coilover system will probably work better. Mugun did offer a factory upgrade when the beat was new that you could option with it, and it's slightly stiffer shocks and springs, but generally speaking, and it's slightly stiffer shocks and springs, but they aren't adjustable. They're just one damping, one ride height, that's it. Tiny bit lower than standard, but not much. There's a number of aftermarket options for coilovers for the beat, and they include BC Racing, Blitz, Gaz, File Connection, Jays Racing, among others. There are differences between these, however. Some of them are only height adjustable, with no control of the damping. Some of them will also have damping, and uh, others will also have camber control, like a top plate that you can adjust the camber on. There are some rumours that BC Racing and Blitz are actually the same coilover because they're made from the same factory, they're owned by the same company. I can't be 100% sure on that, but generally speaking, BC Racing coilovers are a little bit cheaper. So if you're choosing between the two, that seems like a no-brainer to me. A question that quite often comes up is around air suspension or bags. Uh, on Honda Beat. There is no off-the-shelf kit for this. There are companies out there that will custom make air suspension for any car um, and it has been done as per this picture. The next most common mod that people do on any car uh, is wheels and uh, this is just to give you some information around what fits a Beat. They obviously come with standard 13 inch on the front, 14 inch on the rear, they're 4x100 PCD and you can move up in size. So you can move anywhere from a 13 to a 17 inch. There has been people who fit 17 inch, obviously with a very small uh, tire. But the ones that seem to suit the beat the most just for handling, for weight, and for what looks, you know, fits with a small car like a beat is kind of 14 to 15 inch. So some people keep that stagger and they put a 14 inch on the front, 15 on the rear, or 14s all around, 15s all around. I've tried all of those combinations and they all work really well on a beat as long as you stay within the width and offset which I'll talk about next. A lot of aftermarket 15, 16, 17 inch wheels will be in the kind of eight inch wide uh, wheel kind of area, which really is pushing it on a beat uh, if you want to keep the, stocks, the stock fenders. If you want to keep within the fenders and be legal and not have to put over fenders on, anywhere in the kind of 5J to 7J really is the upper end of that um, will work best. My personal opinion is anywhere between five and a half and six and a half is a really good fit for the beat. Um, with a 7J, they'll stick out a little bit past the fenders, but because there's such a small tire on them, it will stretch the tire in and it's okay. And then if you have aftermarket suspension, you can use the camber plates to bring that camber in. 8J really is pushing it and you're gonna probably need uh, over fenders for that. Offset wise, again, they're pretty weak, like a, a lot of Hondas. So anywhere between 25 and 45, roughly speaking, is gonna be okay. A large portion of those offsets will need spacers. So you can go up to a five mil spacer kind of with no issue. If you go past five, you're gonna need, need longer uh, wheel studs because it's just gonna take too much away from that and the nuts aren't gonna get enough uh, threads to, to screw onto. Center bore is one thing that gladly you don't need to worry about because there is no center bore. Uh, there's no hub centric kind of uh, bore on a, on a Honda Beat. So they don't need to hang on to anything. You don't need spigot rings or anything like that. They are centered by the actual uh, lug nuts themselves. So you can see some examples here of what the different size wheels look like on different cars. 13 inch, 14 inch, 15 inch, 16 inch. When on the topic of suspension and wheels and handling, I thought I'd talk about chassis. So there are a lot of different chassis options available. 
There's a whole range of uh, roll cages that you can get. Obviously, you can custom make your, your own as well, but you can buy them from, from Japan. Um, you can also get different bracing. The well, most well-known um, company that offers a whole range of uh, braces is Carving. And they have braces that go under the bonnet, between the strut towers, underneath, everywhere. One other option that apparently makes a big difference is to add a rear anti-roll bar or a sway bar. They didn't come standard with these. And Backyard Special, who are based in Japan, do offer a rear anti-roll bar kit, which bolts up to the chassis. Um, there have been some people who experimented with using uh, an MX-5, an NA MX-5 rear anti-roll bar and uh, creating some custom brackets and that apparently does work as well, but it's obviously a lot more fabrication involved than that. So on to performance. And the obvious start here is exhaust. Um, again, there's loads and loads of options in Japan for stainless steel uh, exhaust if you don't want to custom make your own. Right from the manifold back, decats or test pipes, um, and various different uh, iterations of tailpipes to come out between one and four exits. You can also get exhaust from well-known brands for reasonable prices like HKS. Um, but again, delivery is going to be the killer there. So anything from Japan is going to cost you and they're obviously not light items. So onto the intake. And one thing that's unusual about the beat is that the air filter doesn't fit with any other car. So really your options are limited and there aren't really many aftermarket panel filters that drop in. Uh, K&N, some of them can be adjusted to fit to it, but they're none made specifically for the beat. So RS Mach and HKS do aftermarket um, kind of conversion kits to go to their cone filters, which changes the intake a little bit, but just means it's a bit more serviceable. One other item that you can do to the intake without replacing the whole thing or going crazy is to add these extra little trumpets into the intake runners of the ITBs. This apparently makes it sound a lot better, uh, but power-wise, it's probably not going to make a huge amount of difference. There are companies like Cozy Lights that make full-on rebuilds and complete engine kits um, if you want to up that, uh, that horsepower. Everything from pistons to camshafts to springs to ITBs with a larger bore, you know, they have a, a quite a selection, but they are not going to be cheap. Some of these mods will allow you to spin the engine even faster, up to 10,000 RPM. If you're looking for even more revs, that's an option. Next, I'm gonna talk about the ECU, and in previous videos I've talked about the weaknesses of the ECU, but there are actually some options also for modifying. One is more of a safety thing, uh, a precaution. One of the issues with the, the location of the ECU is that it's mounted on the bulkhead behind the passenger seat, and it gets both heat soak and vibrations um, through the cabin from the engine, um, and that can lead to some of the capacitors leaking and cracked joints on the circuit board. So one way to get around this is to get an extension cable which basically allows you to move, move that ECU and mount it under the passenger seat instead away from the heat and away from the vibrations. So it's, that's more of a preventative maintenance item. There are also options you can do with the ECU where you can add in um, a ROM chip which will do things like remove the speed limiter but whether it actually adds performance is up for debate. Another more extensive option is to remove the stock ECU altogether and there are guys who are putting together a package where it will come with a complete loom ECU um, coil packs which will replace the distributor so the distributor can be actually deleted and all of this will apparently free up a little bit of power because it f takes away that friction that the distributor is creating as well as give more control over the fueling. The other thing it'll do is give you peace of mind that the stock ECU will not have issues which it's known for. If you wanted to do some more extensive modding, like turbocharging, well then something like this ECU upgrade would be a really good option. Speaking of turbos, there is no off the shelf kit. This is just showing a particular guy who would put together a turbo kit for himself um, and, and done all the fabrication himself and was then subsequently selling it, but it shows all the parts involved in turboing a beat. And this is what it looks like when it's fitted to the car. If you are going to start doing engine mods, whether it be exhaust, intake, turbos, you know, ECU, putting more power out, you may want to look into upgrading your radiators or even the fact that the beat radiators are going to be very old in most cars. You can get full aluminium thicker core radiators and you can also get oil coolers if you're going to be doing any sort of track work. If you've ever driven a beat, you will know that they rev extremely high, which is great fun on a back road. But when you're on the motorway or the highway, it can be exhausting. So if you're doing, say, you know, 120 kilometers an hour, you're going to be doing like nearly 6,000 revs on the motorway. 
Um, and the engine is happy to do it, but your ears may not be. <laughs> One option here is that you can change the ratios of the fourth and fifth gear so that it's a bit more highway friendly. The Honda Acti has some different ratios also, so some of those can be swapped in. So that is also an option. The one question that keeps coming up over and over again is about engine swaps. One thing you need to know about the Beat is that that engine is unique to the Beat. Yes, there are other variations in other cars, but in that particular format with the ITBs and everything else, the M-Track system that they have, it's unique to the Beat. And even the orientation, the way it's fitted into the car is very different than any other car. With all the ancillaries attached to it, you can't really see which way it's facing nearly. But when you look at a cross section, you can see that the angle of that engine is very steeply mounted. Um, so on the bottom, you can see there's a flat surface for the oil pan, but the engine doesn't, you know, uh, sit straight up. It's at an extreme angle. The result of that is that uh, engine swaps are very difficult. Um, although there is space there, the orientation of the way the, the, the stock engine is fitted means that it's going to be very tricky. If you were to mount an alternative engine in that orientation, you can run into issues with oil drainage um, because they were never designed to be canted that far over. But that's not to say it's impossible. One of the most famous engine swaps, which was done a long, long time ago in Japan by a company called Backyard Special, is that they had put a B18 uh, engine into uh, a kind of a track car which sits outside their, sh their shop to this day being neglected, but that's another story. And there have been some other people that put B16s, B18s and even a K into a beat. I think these two lower pictures are actually from the same person's projects. With the exception of the backyard special, whether the other projects were actually finished and on the road, there's no real video evidence of that. Um, their work in progress or their projects that got abandoned because it's just too difficult. A far more sensible option is either a D-series or L-series motor from a Honda. There are a number of people working on uh, those type of engine swaps right now, even with turbo um, additions made to those engines. Um, and it seems to be a much better fit. Again, there's no off-the-shelf subframe for these type of builds. Everything is custom. So if you're good at fabrication, I'm sure you can figure it out. Bike engine is another one that has come up a number of times and there was a video of one particular uh, guy who'd fitted a bike engine to a beat and I'll put it in here. Generally speaking, the nature of the beat, the weight of the beat, it would suit it quite well but it doesn't seem that many people have actually completed that swap so I'm guessing it's not easy. If you're modifying your Beat, why not modify yourself and get some Honda Beat t-shirts? I mean, come on. You can find this t-shirt along with some other Honda Beat designs at jazdashop.com. We've even got loads of aftermarket wheel t-shirts like Ray's T37s, Enki RPF ones, you name it. It's all on there along with loads of other OEM manufacturers. So if you love wheels, go to jazzashop.com and pick yourself up a cool t-shirt. Okay, so with all that performance, you're gonna need to stop. And the beat brakes, there's no ABS and the discs are pretty small for a standard. There are a number of off-the-shelf kits available from guys online, including uh, taking the brakes from an, a, a Honda S660 or, or far more commonly, a Jazz or Fit brakes and fitting them to a beat and that will require taking the calipers then there's adapter brackets and using the larger discs and pads obviously. It's meant to be quite the improvement it doesn't cost a huge amount and then obviously the consumables of pads and discs are going to be very cheap going forward so it does seem like a worthwhile option if you're going to be tracking your beat or upping the power. Part of the beauty of the Honda Beat is in its simplicity of its style I think. Um, however I do understand that some people find it just a bit too plain and there are loads and loads of body kit options but if you wanted to keep it simple you could go with over fenders of which there's a number of suppliers in Japan. The over fenders are particularly useful if you want to be running a very wide wheel um, like I mentioned earlier on something like an 8, eight inch wide wheel. Scoops for the side of the car to pull in more air into the engine. There are loads and loads of body kits out there. Um, there was a factory body kit available from Mugen but there is loads of other options out there also. The one thing I would say is getting somebody to ship body parts from Japan to the States or Europe or wherever 
is a tricky thing. Um, so one person I found who is willing to do this is Jesse Streeter. So if you go to jessestreeter.com. So if you're interested in getting a body kit, I would suggest reaching out to him. Hard tops, hard tops, hard tops. People love hard tops. I don't get it personally. I mean, the whole point of a beat is that it's convertible and you're out in the open air. But, but there are lots and lots of companies that make uh, hard tops or have done in the past. The hard tops fall into two different brackets. So you can either get one that ha has a window that's kind of behind your head and it's got an access panel, which means that you won't have to take off the hard top to uh, get to the engine bay if you want to, you know, change spark plugs or whatever. Uh, the other option is uh, more like the one on the bottom here, which I think might be a Mugen one. And it goes over that engine access panel, which does mean that you'll need to remove that hard top anytime you want to do more extensive work. Typically speaking, the hardtops are expensive to buy in Japan, but the issue is shipping. They're bulky, they're heavy, they've got glass in it. They probably will end up costing thousands to get to your destination on top of the purchase price. So it's hard to justify it. What most people seem to recommend is uh, look on the auctions for a beat that has one already and buy the whole beat and then uh, take the hardtop off and sell the car afterwards. Sounds a bit crazy, but that's how rare they are. And why not do the opposite? chop the windscreen in half and take off the top altogether. This is a guy in the UK and he's made a speedster. Very low weight obviously because he's cut the windscreen in half, he's cut the door glass down, he's changed the whole deck lid, there's no soft top and it's a really interesting concept. I think this one was actually for sale recently but I'm not sure now. One other way to add some safety to your beat as well as it make it look better is to change to aftermarket headlights. There seems to be loads of LED options out there, but whether the pattern and the fit is going to work for a beat, um, it's, it's debatable. So there seems to be one company with a really good reputation. They do cost a little bit of money um, and they're based in Japan. They're called Nihon. So if you look that up, you'll probably find it. Moving to the interior and the most obvious place to start is around the steering wheel and gear knob. So there are baskets available. You can get them very, very easily. Um, and they'll allow you to fit you know, any sort of pattern uh, wheel after that. So whether it be Nardi or Romo or whatever. Two on the bottom there are wheels that I put on, different diameters. The stock wheel is quite a large diameter and I found that it just didn't give me enough leg room. So if you are going with an aftermarket wheel, I'd suggest to go on one smaller. Um, that particular Momo tuner that I have on at the moment is kind of non-concentric. So um, it's a little bit up so that you've got, you still got your view of the, uh, the binnacle and the instruments there. As for the shift knob, again, it's pretty straightforward. You can actually fit an NSX gear knob, which is what is pictured here. So there's loads of options there. Moving to the seats, and most people love the zebra print seats that come as standard in the beat. But the problem with them is, is when they wear and the bolsters wear and they rip, it's very, very difficult to get fabric for them, except if you get in touch with one. But there are some options without completely replacing the seat. There was a partnership between Brid and Honda where they actually created the seat covers specifically for the Beat seats. Um, so you can get those Brid seats. Um, there's also companies like Spiegel who make um, you know leather covers and there's other companies that make covers in lots and lots of different colors. Uh, again, kind of leather, fake leather. But if you do you want to swap out your seat completely, uh, there has been some success with S2000 seats. They do need to be adapted a little bit. You can get certain Brid and Lomax seats and very various kind of narrower seats like that that will fit in a Beat. Uh, one thing you do need to know is the stock seats on a Honda Beat, the, the drivers and passenger ones are different sizes completely. The passenger one is more narrow. So while you might get a seat that will fit uh, the driver side, you can, might then try and fit it on the, the passenger side and find that it doesn't fit at all because this, the same uh, space isn't there. And while we're talking about zebra print, another common issue is that the floor mats will be either missing on your beat or else um, the zebra print ones that came as, from factory will be badly worn. So you can go with a traditional Japanese kind of checkered flag look. There's loads of options out there. Um, again, most of it on Yahoo Japan. But if you want to go the whole hog on your interior, you can go to town on carbon fiber if that's your thing. There's lots of options out there from the various companies. Cozy Lights used to offer a whole range of uh, carbon fiber parts, so I inquired about it recently, and he stopped making most of these parts, which is unfortunate. But the actual dash pads, the center console all the way down and back up to the, the tape holders or subwoofers or whatever's behind your, your beat can be replaced with carbon fiber. The binnacle has got a, a kind of an overlay, you can go on that. The door cards can be replaced, that gray plastic with um, carbon fiber. 
which ones of these are still available is you know for you to do your research and find out but these were all on the market at one point and while we're talking the interior we'll talk about the stereo again it's a weak point of uh, Honda Beats the standard stereo tends to not age very well uh, on top of the fact that it doesn't have uh, auxiliary inputs and um, the frequencies will be all wrong for uh, most other places outside of Japan um, the buttons don't tend to wear very well, the, the circuit boards inside can have issues with capacitors um, so a lot of people find that they just don't have a functioning stereo. Weirdly Gathers did redesign the Honda Beat uh, stereo about 10 years after it was released um, and it does have a lot of updated features like auxiliary in a much better screen. It fits perfectly with the style of the Beat, it was designed exactly for the Beat but they cost crazy money like over a thousand euro I don't see how anybody can justify it, but there you go. Another option is that I have designed a fascia where it allows you to fit a kind of square format marine radio. If you want to find that fascia and buy that stereo, um, I've got a whole video on that. Um, and I also have the files on Thingiverse if you want to print it yourself. If you want to keep the stock beat stereo, but you can't get it working or else you want that auxiliary in, there is another way to do it, which is to use what's called a ghost box, which sits behind the stereo in behind the dash. And it's got Bluetooth and all of the modern amenities uh, for that. It connects right into the Honda wiring loom, so you don't need to splice you know, wires together and all that. And essentially, you're just streaming through that directly and you're not really using the stereo, but the stereo is there, so it keeps the look of the interior to beat. And the last option is you can fit single DIN and double DIN normal size stereos. It do, they don't really fit properly in, in the dash itself, but they can kind of go over the edge. They don't look terrible, to be honest. You can get um, plastic and fiberglass parts which will you know, properly shroud them in. Um, but there are lots of options there. And this is an example of a custom build that somebody did. So that is it. I hope this has been useful for anyone that's thinking about modifying a beat. It's not meant to be an exhaustive list, just the general things that seem to come up again and again that people are asking about. And one thing I'll leave you with is, if you do want to buy a lot of these parts, the first place I would look is on Etsurayu. He is an excellent resource for beat owners to source parts in Japan and send them over. If you were looking for bigger body kit panels and things like that, um, you know, it's worth getting in touch with Jesse Streeter. Um, and also have a look at the Cozy Lights website because the amount of parts and performance parts he has on his website is really impressive. If you do actually want to buy any Cozy Light parts, again, reach out to Rob and Etsy Ryo and he should be able to sort you out. All the best. Sloan.